Hello there, that's Beemore. Just a bunch of nerds and I'm here to teach you how to play the game Scoville. A game about growing hot peppers and uh, making chili. That uh, would be the best way to sum it up. Uh, Scoville being a way of measuring the heat of peppers. And uh, this game takes place in the fictional town of Scoville. In which you are trying to fill the, grow different hot peppers, fill orders. At the end of the game, whoever gets the most points from filling these orders and making these chili recipes is going to be the winner and so I've got everything set up here similar to a or pretty much like a two-player game can go over a few things uh, so on the bottom here we have these different tiles put out or plaques and they're awards now you're playing a two or three person game you take the highest value one off each section so that would leave you with one 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 two and two and for a four more person game, he would have all of them there. The next thing that we have here is each player has their three special action tiles. So you each get, this. it's the same for each player and they are worth four victory points. The uh, numbers in the flame is your victory points at the end of the game, but they also give you benefits when playing the game. Each player gets 10 coins. So I have five and five ones. They get their farmer character, so I have the purple and the orange player here. And each player starts off with one red, one blue, and one yellow pepper. They would also get, but I'm not going to play here with this, <coughs> just as I'm teaching the game, with maybe a little screen, because you want to hide how much money and how many peppers you have, so you just have everything behind there. The next thing we'd start off with is out of the blue deck, there are two decks of cards. Uh, or, well, there's a couple of decks cards, but there are auction and order cards, and they come in blue and green. And blue signifies the morning, so when you're using those, you're in the morning phase of the game, and as the game progresses, you go into the afternoon phase. So these are the orders that we are trying to fulfill, and uh, there's a little chart on the side here. Let's see if we can zoom in on it. It's tough to bits. see here, but two players, you have seven of these cards, three, you have nine, four, eleven, five, thirteen. And for six players, you have 15. And so we have our seven picked out here, and I don't have uh, exactly a place to lay out for this here, but uh, these would be laid out that everyone would try to accomplish. And then on the other side of the board, there's a similar chart like this that shows how many recipes, and these are other ways to score victory points. You turn in these peppers, and you collect this card for that many points. And so on a two-player game, there would be eight of them. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So we'll have the eight recipes and we'll set those aside for now. Then we would take our turn order markers here and just randomize. So first player in this game will be orange and second player will be purple. And every other turn you will bid to see who goes where. And uh, the final thing you do for setup is you would take three peppers, a red, a yellow, and a blue, and just mix them up, so I'm just going to grab two of them, and you put these into the green spots here. And these are the starting peppers. <coughs> Final thing for setup, is we would go to the auction deck. And so it's blue again for morning, and we would put out the peppers that are for sale for the day. And uh, they would go up here, and there's so there's spots and little markers on them showing, so we only are playing with two players, we'd only fill the first two spots up. So, turn order has been set, so orange player would be going first here, and, uh, but I'm just going to show you how a typical turn would go. So, after you play your turns here, you would mark off to show where you went. So, first player would go in the first slot and second slot, and the reason being is that the next turn you would do a bid to see who goes first. And you simply hold out your hands, and orange bid six, and two is bid by purple, so they pay their bid, and then orange would get to pick where they want to go, and you can pick first or second, and there's a significance to where you go, and you may choose to. And purple then would take whatever is left over. And part of the reason you also keep them on this little slot here is if someone, you can bid zero, so if someone chooses to bid zero, or in case both people bid zero, they simply go in 
in the order they were playing. So if we were playing a three-person game, and say purple bid, and orange and red bid zero, orange would then go here, and red would go here. So the first thing that comes out of this is you get to pick what you want to get from the auction here. So in this case, one ha you get these two auction cards. One gives you a blue and a red pepper, and one gives you a blue pepper. So orange is going to take the blue and the red pepper, because why not get one extra? And then purple will take the other one, and that gives them just a blue pepper. So the next step, and this will go in turn order here, and I'll just show you on the bottom of the turn order track. There's a bit of a summary here. So planting phase follows turn order, harvesting phase follows reverse turn order, and fulfillment follows turn order again. So in planting phase, you take one of the peppers that you have, and you can simply plant them in any adjacent plot here. And so I'm going to plant one here for orange, and, uh, well, actually we'll put oranges here, and we'll put purples one there. So they've done all their planting, now this is where you can use, at one point, one of your extra actions, plant one extra pepper, but in this case they will not do that. The next thing we'll go to is harvesting. So this goes in reverse turn order. And so all the farmers will start off on the star in the first round. And then they will decide where they're going to move. And this here spot, whenever whenever you start a turn, you start wherever you were last turn and you're given the option, you can turn around once before you take your action and then you move three spaces. <clears throat> so the spaces that you move is just from my guy keeps falling over here. This uh, jigsaw board is not completely balanced there. And so you simply move along the different, to the middle of the different plots. There's little diamonds in here. And so you, that would be one move, two moves, three moves, four, five. And on your turn, you can take three moves, unless you choose to use your extra move. And you're not allowed to backtrack. So if I go here, that's one. I can't turn around. I gotta keep going that direction. So two, three, and the next turn I can get back to where I was. The only time you can turn around is at the start of your move phase. You can turn yourself around and go a different direction. And of course there is your third tile you can use, which allows you to double back once. And so this would be if I went here and then use my tile, I can double back into here. So what you're doing in harvesting phase is every time you move between two peppers, you get you har to harvest peppers. And now the star, the first area doesn't count where you're starting, it's just every one you move between. So you have this little chart here, and this just shows you what peppers you're able to get when you end up between. So in this case here, let's say I'm gonna go into the spot here between the blue and the red. So red and a blue pepper gives a purple pepper. So one, two, and I'm not even gonna move my third move because there's nothing I can really do. So I got in between those two and I would collect one purple. And then the other player would go. And so let's just say they go in between red and uh, yellow and they would get one orange and that would be the end of the harvesting phase. <coughs> the next phase that's available is fulfillment and this is where you can look at the stock that you have and you can fill up to one of the stock requests so starting with orange they've looked through what they have here and there's this one and it's asking for two blue. As a reward, you get one brown and two dollars. So they're going to fill that, and I'll just take this in front of them. And so they'll give their two blue peppers up, and they will get one brown and two dollars. They also are allowed to fill one 
uh, chili recipe. So let's just see what we have here. So a ghost pepper or a phantom pepper, I think they call it in the game. A black, a white, and a brown. Two black, two brown, two red. So there's nothing really they can fill here because they gave up their blue one to get that brown. And so they will just pass on that. And the final thing you can do is you could sell the peppers that you have in stock in your stock. And the way it works is you choose one color of pepper you want to sell, and you can sell up to five of that on your turn. <coughs> and the value of the peppers is one dollar for every two of those peppers that have been planted. So right now, if they were to sell red, red would be worth one dollar because there are two red ones out there. However, these two blue, they would be worth zero because there's only one out there. So you need to have at least two peppers out for that turn. And then you can sell them for that amount, up to five of that one color. So that would be the end of Orange's turn. So Purple would take their turn. And we'll just look here, see if they want to fulfill something. And they, they're going to hold on to what they have here. And they're going to hold on to their chili recipe. They're, they're hold off on the chili. They're not going to sell anything. And so that would be the end of the turn. So the next turn would begin. So each player has made their turn. They will bid on who wants to go first. And so in this one here, let's just get the bid ready. And purple bids three. And two is bid by orange. So purple gets to pick first, and they want to take the second spot. And there's there's a uh, a good reason for that, and I'll show you where strategy can come in. So orange would take the first spot. So the new peppers would come up here. Now in this case, since orange got the first spot again, they would get first pick. However, in this case, it's just both one blue pepper. So they both take them. And so they go into planting. So orange is going to place this pepper here. They want to keep it away from purple. They don't want them to go there. And uh, purple on their turn is going to plant a purple one here. Now, what we're going to go to here is with planting peppers, now that you're planting the newer kinds beyond the first three, there's a selection of discs down here, or plaques, and uh, they have different peppers and points shown on them. So a phantom pepper, black, a uh, white, brown, and then this one shows orange, green, and purple. So whenever you, if you're the first person to plant one of these peppers, you just claim one of these plaques. You can only claim one per turn. If you ever use your plant multiple peppers, you can't claim two of these. So because orange planted that orange pepper, they would take this and they would go and get that. And then because purple planted a purple pepper, they would also collect this. And those plaques have now been used up. So when I went into the bidding, I said that there'd be a strategic reason for why purple might bid higher to go second. So I'm going to show it here. And I played this into the specific scenario. But purple's going to go and they're going to stay moving forward. A few things about moving, you cannot move through another player. So you you are blocked off at this point. Where, where a farmer ends up can block you from going there and uh, that will play a factor in this one. So purple will be again moving first because they are second and that harvest, harvesting goes reverse turn order. So they're going to make their first move and they're going to end up between the purple and the blue. So blue and purple gets you a brown pepper. Brown peppers are not the best when it comes to scoring, uh, but they are used in a lot of the chilies and they don't really plant for much. Brown peppers with a lot of things don't give you any benefits, but they are used to create the chili, so you need to have them in there. So that's move one, move two, move three, and then this player is going to move one extra step. So they're going to spend this action and they're going to move here. So they're between yellow and orange. That will get them another brown pepper. But what they've done is they've now blocked off 
this opponent from going there for this turn. So, Orange will make their turn now, and you can, like I said, at the start of your turn, you're allowed to turn around for free, so he'll just turn around, and one, which will get him another purple, two, which will get him brown, and then three. So they'll end up right there. They won't get anything, they're not between two peppers. And so we'll go on again to fulfillment and filling for the recipes and selling your peppers. And you'll continue bidding turn order as the game goes on. So the fifth step in a round, which comes after your fulfillment, is the time check. And I didn't go over it the first round because obviously it's not going to come up in the first round. And this is just to see if the game is still going or if we're going to change the stages of the game. And so I'll go over everything we have here. Uh, so if it's in the morning, so we are playing in the morning, we're using still the, the cards from the blue decks. If it's the morning and if there are fewer cards and there are players for the recipes, so the recipe cards here, if there are fewer remaining cards and there are players, the afternoon is skipped, one more round is played, and then the game will end after fulfillment. So in a two-player game, there'd have to be only one recipe left at the end of a round. The next thing you do is you'd count the market cards. And if there are at least as many cards remaining as there are players, then it's still morning and you start a new round. So in this case, as long as there's two, we keep going. And if there are fewer cards than players, the game progresses to the afternoon. So you discard the remaining cards. So if, again, if there were only one card remaining, you'd discard it. And then you'd draw a new set of cards from the afternoon deck. So this green deck here, which has more higher level requests and then you'd return all these blue ones to the deck box or the box you'd return the deck of blue auction cards back to the box and you would now switch over to the afternoon one and the afternoon one is, is also giving you more than just your plain peppers Now, if you're in the afternoon phase already, and there are fewer cards than there are players in either the market area or the recipe area, then you'll play one more round, you'll do your fulfillment phase, and you'll end the game. If in the afternoon you ever come down to there being a combined recipes and market cards less than the number of players, then the game ends. There's no final round. It immediately ends and goes to scoring. I don't see it happening very often in a two-player game, just to get down to only one recipe and use up all the market cards, or vice versa, seems very unlikely in that amount of players. But when you're playing a six-person game, it, it could be possible that you'd get down to six card, less than six cards on the table. But at that point, you would move into your scoring. And if any time you do your count up and there are more cards than players or none of these things are met, you just simply start a new round, do your bidding, and go on again. So when it comes to the end of the game, now it is time to count the points and see who has won this game. Uh, of course, I haven't played through a full game here, but I'll just go over the examples of what you'd be scoring points for. First thing you score points for is your market cards. So this card here is worth three, and this one's worth one. And so yeah, you just add those up, and the same thing with the points on your recipe cards. So this one here for three points, you have some bigger ones here, that one's worth 17 points. Do you add those up as well? Then you add up the rewards on your plaques, so you got two for that one, or eight for being the first person to plant one of these phantom peppers or six for a black pepper, five for a white pepper. Any of the actions that you did not use are worth four points. So if you managed to make it through the game not using, that's an instant 12 points. And finally, you count up your coins, and every three coins is worth one point. So this player here had seven coins remaining. You don't take remainders. So this would be six coins, counting for two points. 
and obviously whoever has the most points would win the game. If there's ever a tie, you'd simply go to the coins and whoever had the most coins. So this is where if one player had six and one had seven, they'd both get two points. But if there's a tie, this player would be the victor. Scoville is, in my opinion, very easy to learn. Uh, I enjoyed it. The theme is kind of fun. I was really skeptical when I first heard about this, like a game about peppers. It took me a while to actually look into it, but as soon as I did, I was really caught by it. I like the quality of the, the little peppers they have here. You got these little plastic ones for your phantom or ghost peppers. I mean, they're nice quality, nice colors. The cards are good quality. Very simple, a little bit of flavor on them. You know, if these are fundraisers for the local team, so go Flames, the Scoville Flames makes sense. I would definitely recommend this one here. It doesn't, it doesn't take that long to play. Uh, it depends on it always depends on the group you're playing with and it does not take that long to teach so I'm definitely glad that you so I just want to thank everyone for taking the time to view this video as always I like to ask you to like comment subscribe share this video with your friends or your gaming groups the only way we're going to be able to, to know that people are watching is to, to get that feedback we're always trying to get more subscribers to show that people like our work and uh, we will be back with more gaming videos and how to plays and unboxings. Just if you have something you want to see, let us know and we'll definitely try to work towards that. So once again, this is Be More with Just a Bunch of Nerds and I am signing off.